I'm hearing some uh, feedback in my headphones. I think that's smart. I've got some feedback. This show is fucking awful. <laughs> A lot of negative feedback <laughs> in my end as well. <laughs> yeah. I've had nothing yeah. but negative feedback, so don't worry about the static, right? All right. I would never send a feedback. <laughs> <laughs> and now for the thousands in attendance and the millions around the world who wish they could be here, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready for Sports Cafe! Okay, let's get into it. Like, uh, welcome to the um, DAB Sports Cafe ish. Um, we've got a special uh, guest with us today, apart from uh, Lee and Macca. Um, James McConey is joining us uh, live from Paris, where the Olympics are about to start. Welcome, James. Ah, uh, Kiara, uh, yeah, bienvenue, bonjour from uh, Gay Paris and uh, beautiful place that it is. Uh, lost the me sun is shining. What's that? You've lost you already. <laughs> You lost me. Okay, there's shit in the river. Does that interest you? Yeah, that's interesting. Fuck, um, we're back. Mac, are this you is turned... a, an absolute farce. I can't see anything. I can only hear it. You, you flicked your camera off. Yeah, I, can't, I can't see Mark anymore. You flicked no. your camera. You've done something to your camera. I've got to rejoin the session. Well, I was trying to look at my notes. Well, don't do anything else. Every time you do that, it stuffs it up. All right. Well, I'll tell you what I should do. So I should see you later. And then get out of there and then whisper, whisper backstage. There you, there you oh, go. Oh, there you go. So, so when you're doing this, you Mac, can you try not to answer your texts and, and sort of check your Facebook feed and stuff like that? Can you just focus? Sort of thought I had that under control, Rick. The focusing Clearly bit? not. No. Oh, no, just, uh, you know, new age, you know, IT. Can, can I ask you all a question? Like with the Olympics coming up, what is – What's your favourite ever Olympic moment? For who? Me or Mark or Lee? All, all three of you. Just someone come in with a favourite Olympic. It's got to be got to be John Walker with the with the main with uh, Rob Dixon and Dick Quacks, uh, the, the three of them. Uh, you know, the late seventies, early eighties, but Johnny Walker coming through uh, and and sort of breaking the line there to win that was at eight hundred or fifteen hundred. It was the 1500, and, and uh, I don't think either Rod Dixon or Dick Quacks were in that race. I think they raced in the 5000. How do you become a great middle distance runner? How? Oh. Sit in the bath with your Dick Quacks. <laughs> <laughs> totally worth it. So totally good. worth it. It's so good. So good. For me, uh, um, I reckon it's possibly. Uh, Ferguson and McDonald, you know, they looked like robots out there, you know. It was just ridiculous how in sync they were. You, some boy bands would just drive and never actually get that synchronised. They were incredible. And then live, uh, Nick Willis, yeah. I know he only won bronze on the night, but when I was there, I was like, yeah, here, here we go. The Black Singlet is back in the 1500. That was pretty cool. And the Bird's Nest. And, and what about you, Lee? What's yours? Yeah, I think you, you guys might remember this. It, it was that the day after my wedding, we watched Swindells and maybe uh, when they got their medals, remember? Um, it was two separate yeah, was Olympics. D- separate Olympics. Yeah. Was, <laughs> Olympics was that. It all blurs into one, doesn't it? Yeah, but it was especially after the wedding. <laughs> it would have been Athens. It was a big night at my wedding. And then the next day, it kind of blurred into a day two kind of thing. And they, they were part of that um, on the big screen yeah. at the pub. Um, it's a bit of a blur after that. But, um, yeah, that would probably what be it. It was pretty emotional. What about Precious Mike? McKenzie? Yeah, he was Commonwealth Games. Yeah, but he was beautiful. Yeah, he was beautiful. So mine was um, 1976 Olympics. Um, <laughs> 1960. Halberg. Yeah, Halberg no, not, <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> it was Jack Lovelock yeah. in 1936 in front of Adolf well, Hitler. It, it, it's, yeah, that it's was It's funny, it. that was just after your 21st, wasn't it, Rick? You know, like Lee, it was, he's got a memory after his marriage and you, you on your Jesse 21st. Owens. Jesse Owens. Yeah. Hey, Rick, Rick was commentating. Come meals. on, Jack. Jolly good show, Jack. All right, all right. Back <laughs> off, would you? Um, 
It was 1976, oh. and I was watching Nadia Comaneci get oh, um, perfect oh, 10 perfect. Yeah, uh, in the awesome. women's gymnastics. How old were you? Yeah, but... I was uh, – uh, I'm not going to tell you how old I am because then people know how old I am now. Well, no, I mean, I it, you know, we're just trying to ascertain whether your motive was pure. Yeah. I was 14. You're a pervert. I was 14. Yeah. Oh, 14. You're a pervert. You certainly wasn't for her sporting performance. It was yeah, more she was, the overall. She yeah. was 15, and I was very impressed. I remember the old man coming in and catching me watching aerobics old style at like – 10 a.m. on a Sunday morning. <laughs> oh, how good was that show? Oh, it's the same kettle of fish, isn't it? Exactly the same yeah. as Rick. It's like no, when I you was in the, the, uh, the finest catalogue, the swimsuit. I was watching yeah. athletic performance, not not like that blonde lady doing aerobics Oz style. Effie was her name. Don't call her that blonde lady. <laughs> she actually but, married the, the executive of the show in the end, and she became the main... If, there'll be people out there who know what I'm talking about. Yep. It's like right. watching that kids show High Five. That that could be quite 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 um quite a good watch. <laughs> you know, the one with the had the the, the the um you know, not obviously as an adult what you know well you know well just what I've I've um, got a question. Yep. If I've got a question. Who was the guy who hosted the aerobics show before Aerobics Oz style? Not Richard Simmons, yep. but he was in the Bahamas oh. and he had like a group of um, other aerobics people behind him, and he was in a sort of tight jumpsuit himself. Um, mm. Anyway, can't say I watch that one. Yeah, I did, I did Look, can I can I bring this back to the Olympics? Um, <laughs> okay. we, James is obviously <laughs> yeah. in Paris at the moment. We were lucky enough to send um, Lee Hart to Athens to cover the uh, Athens Olympics. Welcome back to Hyundai Sports Cafe. Um, we've sorted out the problems with that guy. He's absolutely in Athens now. Um, that guy, are you are you there? That guy in Athens, there you are. Yes, I'm here live, standing by. Uh, TG, give us a rundown, mate. Is it true that the athletes used to uh, eat sheep's testes uh, to get, <clears throat> you know, a bit of a bit of a buzz before the games? Yes, Mark, you are indeed correct there with that information. You've done your research well. Um, the ancient Greeks, of course, yes, they did at the early Olympic Games um, eat sheep's testicles, of course, for the testosterone, the hormone. It helped them with their performance, of course. And then that's pretty much what everyone here is talking about. Well, why, why, did they, uh, why did they stop eating, eating the knackers? Uh, over. And later on, of course, they started testing for, for the hormone, so they had to be a little more discreet about it. They started using other, other forms of testosterone, like um, hamster or guinea pig's testicles. And um, which, of course, were a lot harder to detect, especially if you're carrying them around in your pocket. Thanks, uh, that guy. Um, that's given us an incredible insight into the Olympics so far. <laughs> no, thank you. The money that can be saved these days with a green screen. Yeah, yeah. No. The same issues every Olympics, isn't it? What, sheep's testes? Well, drugs and performance so enhancing, ge genetics, um, male testosterone, is it male, is it female, you know, can, can same we, stuff. Can we get into the bigger controversy was that during the Athens Olympics, you weren't actually in Athens. Like That was filmed like three months before the Athens Olympics. Oh, no, a week or so before, but that's a technical thing. It's a small technical thing. I couldn't be everywhere at once, Rick, and getting some distance on the games, I thought, gave a unique perspective. Often does. I mean, I did the Beijing ones from Disneyland, LA, so it gives you an idea. I, I know I've said this before, but I would have thought that the, you know, Olympics is could be really spiced up a wee bit. And, you know, if we just had a carte blanche removal of any issue or any uh, legislation against steroids and we just let people yep. go. I mean, which which uh, Olympics are you watching, the, the steroid Olympics or the natural Olympics? Yeah. I just want to see a guy run 100 metres in six seconds and explode like a fly on a windscreen. That's big <laughs> ticket. explodes at the, and, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, well, they're doing the that, aren't they? There's a, they are doing that. There's it. a guy who's doing that. Is it a German bloke, a billionaire, who's decided to have those Olympics? They are doing that. And I, I thought for the show I'd better check on Genius. what's happening here. And I turned on the TV to watch the sports channel here, Lake Keep Sports, and all they had was no Olympics, but they did have the World's Strongest Man event. And they they oh. step inside a VW Beetle um, and frame carry it on the and shoulders. carry it yeah. for about thirty meters. Yeah, it's kind of James, 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 so you can add that. Magnuson. Can can you? They'll you're... be all juiced up, eh, Mecca? Yeah, but we we oh, yeah, we hoping that. All right. And they we carry the, the, the stone. They lift the stone up on their shoulder. Guys, yeah. guys. <laughs> 
James is in Paris, and you were supposed to tell us something about the Olympics, not not about strongest men and and stuff. Like, what's what do you think? What's going to happen in the Olympics? Who? What should we look out for? Who are the, Where's the medals going to come from? Where's some expert analysis? Man, I, I think the gold medals night. will go to the winners. Yeah, yeah and most Keep of going. them will be track and field medals, I suspect. From it who? being the Summer Olympics. Well, no, that you asked where the Olympic medals are coming from, and Lee said some will be gold, and I said most will be track and field. I'm pretty yeah, general question. Be bronze. Isn't it 40% go to the USA, or no, 30%, and then another 30% go to China, and then there's a lolly scramble for the other 30-odd 40%. That's I think about 33% of gold, 33% of silver, and about 33% Correct. of bronze. Can, I can I, I've, go, done, right? I've done some research. and that Most you, people would prefer a gold one. Yeah, so for New Zealand, the chances of gold are in the women's uh, K1 500 with um, Correct. Lisa Carrington and Amy Fisher yeah, going head to head. That's going to be an absolute showdown. That True one. battle. That's huge. Who Ooh. you got, James? Who you got? Who you got? I don't know. I think Amy Fisher is going to be um, tough to beat in that, but we'll see. The goat could just uh, could do it. It's too tough and, to tell. She might bring the same bolt and just and just bring it. And then Elise a- Andrews in the um, woman cycling. Yep, yep, she's up there, and and her sprint team's pretty good. Yep, as well with Rebecca Pitch is in there as well from Tiamutu. And then we've got the obviously the two sevens teams. So they'll be battling for for gold, hopefully. Yeah. They've, they've underestimated. Yeah. I've, I know that article you've printed out, Rick. I think that it's done by some uh, data company. I think they've underestimated us. There's 16 medals they've they've um, forecast. Yeah, no, I, I just scribbled a whole lot of names down. I, it's not an article. As much as I, I, I love uh, the, the rugby sevens, I, I just don't think that the ancient Greeks would have probably contemplated that being part of uh, what they started so long ago. I'm going to go a step further, Mac. And this is no disrespect to any of the the teams that we've got in there that are team based sports. You know, I mean, like, I'm going to go as far as even hockey, um, footballs in there, um, rugby sevens, tennis. You know, I like the mm. track and field. I like the like your traditional stuff. But look, I'm all behind those teams. And if God, you're going you're going to go for it, and we've got some great teams there. But I don't really see sport teams. You know, with eight, ten, eleven members in it. It doesn't feel right for me. But they used to have um, tug of war at the Olympics. Well, why yeah, don't they have that still? I mean, that's a me. bloody great event, isn't it? You know, I mean, James, yeah. you'd be anchor. Rick, you'd be, uh, yeah. you know, pulling the gun. And Lee would be right up the front pulling faces. It'd be, shit, what a team. <laughs> if, you, if you went why to the tug of war. Like some of the, what about that red light, green light from Squid Game? That was a good, that would be amazing at the Olympics. You know, yeah. have you seen Squid Game? Red light. I saw a bit of it, but I can't. Green oh, light. Oh, you stop. You stop. Yeah. You got to freeze, you otherwise you get taken out by an archer or something like that. Well, what about in that movie Apocalypto, where they run the gauntlet and you got javelin throwers throwing the javelin, mm. and you got to try mm. and get to the end, but they all throw at once, you know? And you're yep. doing. It's just called Apocalypto. It was. Just, it's a bit like the Christians to the Lions, isn't it? Like, and, can we? Can uh, Hunger Games. Yeah. Can we? No, mm, we're yeah, not. Hunger we're not Games. Ready. Yeah. We're not really getting anywhere that's going to help the Olympics. Where else do you see the medals coming from, James? Um, I think our athletics team is stronger than it's been for a long time. So Hamish Kerr and the high jump's good. Well, great, really. Um, We've got really good middle distance runners. James Preston broke Peter Snell's record, which stood for over half a century um, just the other day. But it's still an amazing time. And so the 800's not bad. 1500, we've got old uh, Sam Tanner. I think Tory Peters and the Javelin's good. So, yeah, look out for athletics. And of course, Tom Walsh, you know, he's always going to be in the mix. And, just, and I think in the pool, okay. we've got, um, look, you asked for this. And uh, we've got Erica Fairweather, Lewis Clearbert, <laughs> and even Hazel Hourhand in the, in the Butterfly is good as well. So, I mean, though, let's be honest, Hazel those are the two biggest events. Hourhand, yeah. Yeah. Hourhand, yeah. sure. It's a Dutch name. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, what about what about two, six foot three? What about Daniel in the loader? How about him? No, he's not in that mark. Um, what about right? in the um in the track and field, like in the sprints? I, I've been watching that Netflix show Sprinter. Um, so that's going to be huge. Oh, yeah, You've what's... got Noah Lyles, Shikari um, Richardson, um, yeah. Sharika Jackson. You're you know? reading that from a, you're reading that from a list, right? 
I know. I wrote them down. It's called research. It's yeah, called but, preparation. That's uh, cheating. It's yeah, cheating. It's, We're just going on a cuff here. Yeah, well, you, hey, Rick, which is, which is the most arduous of all, all track and field events? Which is the most physically daunting and painful? I used to hate the, 18, uh, the 800. The 400. That's because you've got little yeah. legs. Mm. Hey, hey, Rick, a few years ago on a, a, another sports show, Olympico, um, I brought up this issue. And again, it doesn't go away. Interesting to get the panel's thought on this. Um, Jeremy Wells and myself are discussing this point. Is it time to have a designated Caucasian lane in, say, 100 metres? You're 200 metres, you know, just on the side. So you've always got a, a DCL. Like designated the, the ginger guy in Hyper Olympics. Remember the ginger guy yeah, yeah, in Hyper yeah. Olympics? Nobody ever picked up. Yeah, Great yeah. game, eh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the you just, the, but the how can you improve so if you're not jerseys. competing with the best, you know? How can you improve if you're <laughs> not competing coin going. top level? Oh, shit. Right, well, you fix your phone. Um, one of the things that happened on the show that's probably caused me the most grief was was showing up to work uh, and being um, met by an American lawyer um, who um, had accused us of uh, breaking into one of the... What was uh, her name? Well, it was a male, and he accused us of breaking into the America's Cup base. Um, very Trump-esque. And, um, well, it was a fair accusation because you had. I told you to um, just go and visit um, on the boat on, and have a look back at it. Um, you broke into it. So we had to apologise. And here's the apology. Well, somebody gave us somebody gave us a a, a boat, one of those little like, duck shooting boats, to you know to skim on the very shallow ponds, and it fit it under the wharf perfectly. Security hadn't contemplated that. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get shot. Yeah, let's oh. just look back at Team Bulgaria. It was all beer and skittles for the brave Bulgarian franchise until three of the organisation were caught breaking into the secure area of America True. It was. Our Bay of Pigs! I want to tell you that that was the most just incredibly horrible thing you could have done to us. Now what oh. happens to us? What about if you are disqualified? Our cause was to make a peace, not war, and now you're going to have to apologize. <clears throat> Hello from Team Bulgaria. Eva Bushonova, my Hilandar Pluski Krika. There has been a travesty of justice, and we are partly responsible. Namek Protvita, this Troy made me Kogo. Nitota Badin or Mastekas. We have embarrassed our country and our campaign. Nika the Godita, Borat. Dan is Najabat me, Logata Stevit, Podnara, Neharbo. And now it is time for those responsible to step forward and take their punishment like men. Ralphie. <laughs> Oh, God, I've got a confession to make. That wasn't the real Ralph. That was a Seppin. You can tell by his movements that they weren't quite as fluid as... Maka, <laughs> is that Gimp? Is that Gimp now a captain of industry or maybe even a, like a local body politician or something like that? Well, we tried to actually spread the rumour that it was Paul Holmes back in the day. So we uh, we got Paul to put the mask on and we did a close-up. So we had that little mole on the end of his nose. Yeah. And we did a who is Ralph. And there was just a little mole showing... So there was all sorts of conjecture that it was actually hey, Paul, but it, Ma Maka, it wasn't. Can I? There yep. should be a full documentary on this. Yeah, yeah who's Ralph? Who's, who's Ralph? Full doc, I mean, who is Ralph? Who is Ralph? funded. What are, oh, you, amazing. what are you sitting on, Mark? Are you sitting on a swing? Well, yeah. It's at the airport, though, so no to worry about. Are you in a kid's playground? I haven't paid for it. <laughs> no, I'm in a poke bowl. Right. And whereabouts, in where, whereabouts are you? What what country are you in today? Bari, in Italy, in, in Puglia, down down the uh, opposite Naples. Right, lovely, uh, yeah. lovely place. Did yeah, a bit of cliff diving yesterday. I should have sent some footage through. Flew out a fifteen meter jump, sixteen meters actually. It's quite where, dangerous. Yeah, enough about you. Where are you, Lee? 
Uh, I'm in Germany, <clears throat> about to head down Spain way shortly. I'm researching documentary at the moment um, whether Hitler may have survived the war, actually faked his death. You know, you've seen that before, but a new spin on it would be 140 odd now if he had, but so it's just kind of pointless. But um, the, the thing is, just a doco. yeah, he may have done, but look, I'll, I'll look into it and um, and see what we can make of it. Well, what about the uh, the, the children of Hitler? He had the, the problem with the cluster, didn't he? He wasn't firing. That's why he got so. He wasn't really firing. Angry. I've actually yeah. interviewed someone who actually has one of the pups of one of Hitler's Alsatians. Well, what, you know, uh, the same lineage. So I'm going to yeah. meet them. And um, so this Alsatian is probably the great, 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 great grand pup of one of Hitler's um, Alsatians. Trivia so that's trivia, yeah. trivia question on dogs. <clears throat> Which dog has the greatest biting pressure? It'll surprise you. The yeah, high okay. Um, Chihuahua? No. I'm probably going to go with you, your husky. <laughs> Is it a rotty? No. No. Is it a hyena? It's one of those. Hyena. You know, what, what, are those, what are those dogs like Flash out of Boss Hog? What are they oh. called? It's a basset oh, hound. A, a, a bloodhound. Bloodhound. No, but the bloodhound's are bigger. But the floppy eared thing with the short, stumpy legs, it's got the biggest biting pressure of any dog. Oh, thank you. It Basically, it's the equivalent. Yeah. It's the equivalent of a tiger shark. If it had a bigger mouth, it could okay. bite a turtle in half. Okay. <laughs> if, it it and, if it had yeah. a bigger mouth and could swim. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, now, if that's... my auntie had wheels, she'd be a bike. That's very interesting that you talk about the TAB. Um, we before you good segue before you get going, Rick. Um, I interviewed a Hitler before. There were some Hitlers in Avondale in Auckland. I, I just looked them. I found them in the book, and um, and I uh, I thought, oh, this would make a good story. I was working for Sunday News at the time, and I thought I'd go and see the Hitlers. Hey, can you guys fuck up about Hitler? <laughs> like, <laughs> like <laughs> we did a Hitler no, no, can, can you, can you stop deny history? Talking about the whole subject, and let me get back to the TAB. <laughs> Okay. He was a prick of a man. Let's just yeah. be clear about that. Well, we know, you know that. We're not, oh, we're yeah, not fans asshole. of him. Yeah, he was an asshole. What about Eddie Armin? No. <laughs> just stay away from dictators. <laughs> okay. Mussolini? <laughs> no. Pol Pot? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just clarify one thing. Dictators aren't funny, and we're not going to make okay. any jokes about dictators. Kim Jong-un, Bill's quite funny. No, I He's said no, no dictator jokes. <laughs> We've got to have a line, and that's the line. No evil dictator jokes. All right, look, let's just, let's just clear things up a little bit. Let's just relax. Let's just watch um, – one of our greatest guests on the show, Jonah. It's uh, you know just getting the opportunity to you know to improve my game, playing against uh, playing with those guys. You know, it's uh, just just realising that you know during the World Cup, you know playing around players like the calibre of Christian Cullen, Tana Umanga, and Alama Iremia sort of improves my game that much, and having me to perform every week, every day, uh, you know, it, it's just going to help me try and take take myself to another level to, to improve on my own game. You, you came from Wesley College and the um, you were touted when you were really young, people were going, man, just check this guy out. Have you seen anyone else really young that's, that's come through and, and people are saying, wow, watch out for this person? My baby sister. Your baby sister. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she's really quick at taking off with someone's turkey leg, eh? <laughs> Gotta watch those turkeys. Unless. <laughs> What about, what about, I mean, let's not dwell on the World Cup, but, uh, I mean, do you ever get over something like that? Um, you don't really uh, get over them. You you sort of, like, take what you need from it and then um, you, you dump the rest of it and uh, and you carry on. Because, uh, um, you know, if you the more you dwell on it, the, the more it's going to affect you. Say for the All Blacks or whatever, what's the, what's the try you've enjoyed the most? <laughs> try I've enjoyed the most? Um, actually, I've enjoyed all of them, uh, just... But the, the biggest enjoyment for me is just playing for, playing and representing my country. Um, you know, that's, that's the biggest honour that um, I could say that you know, any New Zealand rugby player could have. Lucky enough to have a lot of great guests on the show. And um, one of the things that really struck me, actually, looking back 
over the last sort of, you know, 10 years or whatever we did the show, um, a lot of people aren't with us anymore, you know? So like Jonah obviously being one of them. Good chance to uh, to segue nicely into the TAB. Now I, I had our money and I put a hundred bucks down and I lost all of it. Again? Again, yeah. Who did you put it on? So um, I bet um, against the All Blacks, like you told me to, which was dumb. Um, I bet on Sever Reese to score. With Fiji? Yeah. Well, that's what Mark told me to do. And then I bet um, on Sever Reese to score two tries in the oh, game. Oh, God. Jesus Christ. Sorry, mate. I'm just, my, my uh, studio has just fallen over. I'm sort of using that to prop the phone up. Big budget stuff, that's right. Sorry, keep going. So um, I put a, I put another hundred bucks down um, this week on um, uh, on the Yankees to win. I've put some money. Um, I've had a bet on the big um, uh, big race, uh, the women's four hundred meters freestyle at the Olympics, uh, which is Ledecky versus Titmus versus McIntosh, uh, which is probably oh, who you go with. I went with uh, young McIntosh, the Canadian. I think she might come through. I think through. it's a good shout. Yeah, yep, do you th- great do you, shout. Do you think so? She's been doing a lot of cold water training. What's that? It's sort of like, uh, well, it's basically jumping into, it's Wim Hoft. You yeah. heard of him, Rick? Yes, I have. Yeah, he, he, his deep breathing in, in, in very inclement conditions. She's been swimming 400 metres, basically in Arctic conditions. <clears throat> and then when you get into warm water, of course, your body's that much more supple. You're not uh, cramping. And uh, the pain factor, you just don't feel pain. And it's an endurance event for 400 metres, so... New form of, uh, of training that she's been in. Obviously, there's some uh, pretty cold lakes, Banff, Kalgoorlie, Canada. <clears throat> that's what she's been doing, and I, I think that's a great bet. Um, can I ask you, are you telling the truth or are you lying? No, I'm telling the truth, mate. I mean, there's, you, you know, the, um, you know the, the ice baths that people are getting into these days, the, the contrast yeah. therapy. Well, it makes good sense, doesn't it? It makes sense. Absolute sense. You've got freezing, frigid, uh, you know, they're cutting, basically. You know, like, you know the movie... Um, uh, the, the kids movie, Ice Age, not Ice Age, um, with Elsa. And, Frozen. Uh, Frozen. Oh. Frozen, yeah. yeah Frozen. They're, they're soaring yeah. through the ice and creating a channel, you know, 400 metres long exactly. And she's swimming that entire how, thing. How do you know that? How do you know? Well, I, I do my research. <laughs> it's like seals. You know, that, they, someone uh, has. You know, or dugongs or what do you call mm. sea cows. Or they all swim in, in cold water no, generally. Two gone to mainly. Yeah, they're, they're usually covered with a, like about two inches of fat over every part of their body. Yeah. Dugons are warm, like a are warm water animals. Well, on land, they're quite ungainly, you know, and they're very mm. uncoordinated. But once they get in the water, they turn into a, it's, it's a whole new world for them. Well, you don't want to know, well, you don't want to know what a, you know, if the a Papua New Guinean sea captain catches a dugon, what they do to it. Yeah, don't, don't go there, please. We've we've talked about that. It just brings back well, memories. It just break, brings back memories that I just don't like to deal with. So, Rick, you mentioned Summer McIntosh, who's the the phenom from Canada, seventeen year old swimmer. Apparently, Matt Richards from Great Britain is going to be the the closest thing to Phelps or whatever. He's he's going to win a few medals in the pool as well. So, there you go. There's something for you. There's another hot tip. Hey, James, you're, you're in Paris. You're in France. You're in Paris. Yeah. Um, what's the river situation? Because weren't they talking about having some of the open water swimming events in the river? Yeah, the, the, the mayor of, the, the mayor of Paris had a had a swim in the Seine the other day. The the river here, saying it's totally fine, but I haven't seen her yet. Like whether she's surfaced or not. It was three days ago. Is she okay? How's her health? But it's um the the, the triathlon and open water swimming is in there. But um, uh, there's, there's also some French protesters who have vowed to, even though they've tried to remove all the shit, they've threatened to take a dump in the Seine as well to renew, to replenish Add to it, it. Yeah. Add to it. But as far as I know, all of our athletes, the Kiwi athletes, have vowed to swim on undeterred. Oh, under the turds. Yeah, undeterred. There you go. Dropping moonfish according to a calendar that, that made them all meet at the same place with the tide. Wasn't that right? Like on social media, know. they said, like, if you live, you know, three kilometres up the, the Seine, you need to drop it at this time in order for them all to coordinate meeting when the mayor or the... Ah, like a convergence. Mayor, 
a convergence. Yeah, yeah they, they, they were on social media. They showed the water current and the, and the time that it took for floaters to come down. And so, if you live 30k upstream, you'd have to do it on Wednesday night in order to hit the Friday morning PR yeah. release. There'd be you know thousands of them all converging at the same spot. It's Quite amazing what you can do with social media, don't it? Yeah, yeah, social media. Um, be nothing worse than going were... for a record. You got a nappy. You're swimming. You're going for the home stretch, and you're like you're a, a nappy or something wrapped around your head or something. You know. Hey, hey, Maka, Maka, can you remember um, talking about driving? Can you remember when we um, went driving and and you made me get stuck over the uh, traffic island? Well. <clears throat> yeah, there was a it was green lane, and they, they were putting in sort of a medium barrier, and uh, you didn't you didn't attack it on the right angle or with enough gusto, and you sort of got plinked on top of it. Most well, embarrassing. Yeah, well, you told me that I, like I shouldn't have gone over it in the first place. It wasn't it wasn't doable. And you should have no. You well, just don't go over it on that angle. You go over it like that. Well, let's have a look. I, I've got some proof. Hundred Dak award that we have to give. It's um. For a little bit of bad navigation, um, <laughs> and, and and I've got to admit some slightly bad driving. Coming back from the uh, rugby on uh, uh, Saturday evening, a uh, bit of a traffic jam, and uh, Mark Ellis, uh, witness A, suggested that we try and drive over the traffic island. You're actually so the you, worst driver I've ever known. You right? try to drive. There's over. the tow truck driver that we called, which also got stranded on the traffic island um, because of my bad driving. Yeah, whose idea was it to drive over? The traffic island. Well, you're in a four-wheel drive, mate. Yeah, I'm in a four-wheel drive, but it's not supposed to go over traffic islands and down a big crevasse. Well, any idiot would have been able to do it, wouldn't they? Dumb idea, was it? Well, so it was my... Well, so if I tell you to jump a cliff, you'll give it a nudge, will you? Possibly. Obviously, we're a little bit caught out here, but... (laughs) Jam behind us. Yeah, well, and that is fake. I mean, we are rank amateurs. And sure, you were given possibly some bad advice. Hold on, get out of the way. He's trying to stop Hold on. Hold on. Oh, 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 you clown. Do you know how heavy those things are? Yeah, but how many people are going to get on? You know? So, uh, we managed to get the car up. Yeah, with, uh, we did. We did. My share strength. Oh, your ingenuity. Well, it's just a matter of getting our heads together, really, and coming up with a strategy. And the tow truck driver's still there. Yeah. So, cheers. Yeah, See ya. <laughs> Hey, good so stupid. <laughs> to see, it was um, it was your fault. I've, I've, I've actually, this is lovely. I've been joined by some young nippers who are, uh, who are on the swings with me now. So, uh, it was never going to be uh, an easy show to do this one, Rick. Oh, it's beautiful. They're have on you, holiday. They're having a lovely time. Have you uh, have you come prepared with something that's uh, made you feel good this week? Me. <laughs> Anyone? Well, I can start. I was uh, in San Diego for that rugby game, the All Blacks versus Fiji. And the enthusiasm that American fans showed for rugby, just they don't even know the game as well as us, is something we need to basically replicate. I mean, we've got no atmosphere in an All Blacks test. You can pretty much yell across the stadium to a mate on the other side, in the other stand at an All Blacks game. And the amount of noise from those American fans I thought was awesome. They I think it's the it. culture of American sport that, they, that, that, that the fans feel really connected to the event, so they feel like they can get yeah. involved, that they can influence it and stuff like that. Whereas you think yeah, yeah, historically, if you look at rugby, we're encouraged not to boo when people kick and all that sort of stuff. In fact, in a lot of countries, it's now silence. It's just a cultural difference, and I think – what the Americans do is awesome. They sort of say, get involved. You know, in basketball, when you're shooting a three-pointer, a, a free throw, they want you to yell and try and put the person off. You know, it's just a different mindset. I love it. What about you, Lee? Anything that's... Oh, uh, look, um, again, this always ambushes me, this question, but I'll just say this much. Um, as much as I'm sort of, I wouldn't say anti all social media and all this sort of modern technology and that, I sound real um, old school here, but... Being able to do this, actually, you know, four mates just can actually get on online together and make a, a really bad um, <laughs> podcast is actually quite, quite, quite a, quite a cool feeling and quite fun. And I'm sort of warming to it. 
I've been dreading this every week, but it's actually getting easier and easier. And um, yeah, I mean, that's a positive. I'm slowly going, shit, that isn't so bad. This is quite fun. You know, <laughs> catching up, I wouldn't have seen you guys um, for a while if I hadn't done this. So it's great. That's actually quite nice. Yeah, it was heartfelt, delightful. Um, I, I saw him, it, it went to uh, a little place called Monopoly, and there's like a cliff jumping thing where Red Bull do their cliff up jumping, but it's off these beautiful Italian sort of castles. And this kid climbed the hill, <clears throat> and he climbed very, very high. I think he got up to 18 metres, and he had a, a fat friend. I'm not body sh- shaming, but he uh, wasn't quite as capable of climbing. And in his endeavour to climb the 18 metres, he fell. Um, he didn't hurt himself. Uh, he sort of fell for about nine metres, but he did land flat on his back. And just before he'd done that, the other guy got to the 18 metres and he was giving the crowd the old, and he was whooping up. So the whole crowd was getting behind. Everyone was in the water. It was like human soup, about 200 people in the water cheering him. And then the big fella fell and did a backflop. And the whole crowd by that stage was, you know, not on their toes, but, you know, cheering. And then this guy, that he would have been 15, went 18 metres up, stood on the edge of this thing and just fell backwards. And we thought, oh, here comes like a, maybe a death-defying backflop. But he just did the full loop and straight in like a pin, feet first, to the rest of the paws of, in Monopoly, in uh, Puya. Yeah, yeah, I think, I, I'm not exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. I said last year. Yeah. yeah. And so, so we, we all tried, them. yeah, we, we all jumped off like the, the, the 10 metre, but it was good. I did that with yeah. my young lad and it's quite nice to get to the age where your kid's got a little bit more Limbo balls in you, and he's sort of trying to push the boundary of going off 12 metres. You say, nah, well, call it quits there. So yeah. the passing of the torch as well, that was a lovely moment. But what, hold on, what happened to the big fella? Did he did he survive? Oh, he, 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 yeah, he did. He, he, he certainly got the stuffing knocked out of him. Um, but I think the fact that the, the crowd was behind him, and he was pretty embarrassed. Um, he sort of got helped off to the rocks and clung there for a while, and... It all it, he failed he sort of paled into insignificance when his mate did the back the back fall from eighteen metres up. It was incredible. Fifteen so, year old. So the good part for you was the the big guy falling over or the or the, the good guy doing the dive? Which just well, so it was I can both of it. I mean it right. was absolute theatre. The, the, right. I mean it wouldn't have been as good if the fact that I hadn't fallen onto his back, nor would it have been as good if that had been the only thing. Right. Okay. Without some talent or skill there. Right, so my one was um, just, you know, uh, James referred to the San Diego game. Well, um, young Hotham um, made his debut in that game and, and watching him was um, his uh, sister, um, uh, Jasmine, who was watching, who's part of the Black Fern Seven. And, uh, and this is her watching her brother make his debut. This is cool. I reckon that's just a great reminder <laughs> that um, not only what it means for the people that make their debuts or play for the All Blacks or, or go to the Olympics and stuff, but what it means for their families, for their parents, for their for their brothers and sisters and stuff like that. I mean, you know, I can imagine your dad and mum were pretty excited when you made your first game for the All Blacks, Macca. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Macca, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I was just thinking about that. Just thinking, I, I, I mean, obviously I was never there to, to see how they reacted, but they were always pretty low-key. So I'd imagine at home there might have been a, a, a couple of good show, but, yeah, I was just imagining that. I mean, being an only child, didn't have any brothers or sisters, they wouldn't have been uh, too enthused. But. One thing that we need to do um, for this podcast is we need a sort of a name for our supporters group. Um, so I don't know if you want to send in some names on social media. You know, we used to call the um, supporters group in the, the old days the Loose Cannons. But whether there's a better name than that, you know, whether someone can send in a name um, that we should call our supporters group. So if you've got any ideas, um, send them through. You're talking to us, or you're talking well, like, to the, the listeners. Talking to the listeners and the viewers on YouTube. But, you know, if you've got any names, chuck them in. 
for sure. Is there a prize for it, Rick? Is there a is there a prize for it? No, it's just the the, the opportunity to, to to sort of have your name put forward and sort of locked in as history. You, you're one tends to incentivize people these days online, don't they? Yeah, well, the prize is is listening to another one of your stories. Worth it. Um, I was going to say uh, Noah Hotham was incredible as a sub in that game. I thought he was played so well, but also fun fact: there were five. Ex Hamilton Boys High students playing in that test match. You had Noah, Cortez Ratima, Imone Narawa, Sevu Reese, and Caleb Munts for Fiji. Is that five? Cool. You watch a lot of sport, don't you? Yeah. Unlike the well, rest I went of to us. that school. Went to that school. Oh, yeah, so, fair enough. So Nigel, Nigel, um, Noah's dad has just quit or resigned as um, first 15 coach, and he's had an an uh, incredible record. It was like 85% win record. And, uh... Sorry, Dad. James. James, Nigel. I think you've I think you've mistaken this for a normal sports show. Like 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 none of the people on this have any Can we knowledge. go back to Hitler now? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can, I, can I just show you? This is my birthday cake. <laughs> Thank you very much. Sorry. I'll um I'll enjoy my birthday cake on my own. Um, well, you guys enjoy Europe. We're going to finish now. Thank you very much and good night. Thank you very much for joining us, you strange people. Um, and thank you, James. Enjoy the Olympics. Um, Thanks, so this, guys. Lovely this, to see you. This is where the podcast ends. Um, happy happy birthday, birthday, Rick. Rick. Enjoy it. Yeah, happy birthday, mate. Thank you. Good on you, mate. You've got about four good summers left. If you're staying on uh, YouTube, um, here's a bit of an extra. We're going to show you how Sports Cafe used to get made. So I was touring with Shaka Khan, and then she said to me, uh, T-Hot. Yeah, right. It's a big show though, mate. Everything falling into place. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, no, mind you. Yeah, I'm going to sort it all out. Yeah, good. Okay. Have we got any guests yet? Have we, have we got any guests for tonight? Have you worked on any? Chrissy, how's it going? Hi. Um, how the guests this week is um, Neil Martin confirmed. No, not confirmed, sorry. Possibly, it's a possibility, yep. How about Harvey Norman? Uh, country? Damn! Um, Hancock? Possibly, yeah. Or, uh, Alvy Martin. Alvy Martin's good at it. Well, Neil Martin, then. Is it looking any good? Yeah. I mean, we've got 24 hours, basically. Have, have you tried Harvey Norman? You know it's got a turnaround, people. You know that. Well, what about Norman Harvey? Have you, have you, Come on, not. people. People. No, no. Well, what about Alvy Norman? Yeah, we, we've got Lee Harvey Norman. Yeah. Yeah. Have you heard from Mark yet? He's looking after that sponsorship money. Kira, you got no money for me. Is that what you're telling me? I'm over it, yeah, very well. <clears throat> Come again, guys. Work it. See you soon. Tall and tall. Think like there's only one question I need answered. How's Eva looking? Still looking good, right? How the jokes? We need we need better jokes. Last week's were terrible. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> you knew here. Sorry, um, man. This is too funny for Rick. Okay. Oh. Just try again. I just the bell. Who's on Mark? Mark. <sighs> Tell you what. Change that to a hamster. Make the guy nude. We're on with it. Nude. Yeah. One more thing. No more fart jokes. All right. Hey, uh, T guy, I'm a bit worried about the sets. Hey, guys, guys, has anyone seen Rick? Yeah, Rick, I don't know. Um... Oh, this is not funny, guys. We're running yeah, out of I'll, time. I'll it, uh, it looks like they're a bit Come behind on. schedule, but. Rick, Rick. Uh, no, no, we're not behind schedule. Everything's looking really good. I know. You just calm down. How are the sets going? Are they set? What? Oh, Jesus. Hey, Lana. So, what we're going to do here is build the set up a little bit and um, give it a bit of lift through the back because we. Especially with um, Mark and Graham, so it quite often have a bit of a problem with them. Um, just go somewhere a bit, just move your phone. Let me clear a bit. Yeah, no, that's good. That's great. You didn't say anything about money, Rick. When did money come into it? You just said go with the flow. Do it. Show it's, up it's, on it's Wednesday. Go. Hey, Lana. You're unbelievable. Lana. And you're not here, so I'm going to do it anyway. Let's go on that. Go, go. Right, mate. I'm just going to go. It's